Hi everybody, this is Joanne and you're in my lab again. A couple weeks ago I was playing around with the gummy bears trying to think of new scientific concepts to present to you. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to run a current through a gummy bear and see what happens? I discovered, first of all, that the power supplies I have here do not produce enough current to create any sort of spectacular results. So uh, until I can get a hold of a more powerful power supply, uh, I thought I would chemically alter the gummy bear in the meantime. And knowing that salty solutions are great at conducting electricity, I went ahead and threw this gummy bear in about 20 milliliters of a salty solution I already have on hand that is used specifically to conduct current for certain cell biological techniques. I left the gummy bear for two weeks and came back and discovered two other very interesting scientific concepts that I want to have you take a closer look at now. So let's go ahead and Here do that. Here we have an orange gummy bear on the right, and he's in his native state. I can touch him, I can bend him. We know he's made of gelatin, and that gelatin holds water. If you are aware of the term of solution, not solving a problem, but a solution being a liquid, usually water, with something dissolved in it, I put my other orange gummy bear into a salty solution, meaning that a lot of salt molecules were dissolved into water. When I threw my gummy bear in there, I saw two interesting things happen. The first thing is that because the gummy bear was not as salty as my salt solution, the water that the gelatin was holding left the gummy bear. Are you ready to see what it looks like? Do you think it shrunk or got bigger? Think about that for a minute. The water left the gummy bear to go to the salty solution, so it shrunk. So here is the salty solution. You can see crystals of salt here, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and you can see the gummy bear. So we're gonna go ahead and take this gummy bear out and take a look at it. So what I saw happen with the shrinking of the gummy bear, the water leaving this gummy bear to try to go to an area with more uh, salt molecules than the bear has is the process of osmosis and that's where water crosses a membrane uh, to go to an area with more uh, solute and in this case our solute is the salt molecules. So you can see he shrunk. His color changed a little bit too and that could be a chemical reaction that could be some of the uh, salt or some of the coloring of the gummy bear that left along with the water. So we've seen the process of osmosis. And if you look in here, then you can see all these salt crystals. These salt crystals were attached all over the surface of the gummy bear. They weren't just floating free. So we'll talk about this process of crystallization as well. So let's go ahead and take these crystals out of here. When you have a solution that has a lot of solute, and in this case it's the salt, that's the solute. Um, these bits of salt can be made to come out of solution in a few ways. One way is to cool the solution down. Now I know I didn't do this because I left my solution at room temperature, but this is how you make, for instance, rock candy. You would add a lot of sugar into warm water because more sugar can dissolve into warm water than into room temperature water. Then you allow that sugary solution to cool down and you provide a place for the sugar crystals to grow and these places are called nucleation sites. And I believe that's what my gummy bear did. My gummy bear sitting in that salt solution provided a nucleation site for crystals to start growing. So. Um, I didn't cool it down, but you can cool down solutions in order to create crystals. And that's what happens with snowflakes, for instance, is a rapid cooling of water, you get crystals. Um, the other way uh, we can create uh, crystals when we usually aren't expecting crystals is to change the pH of the solution. Now it's very possible that the um, citric acid that's in my gummy bear left a little bit, changed the pH. I don't know that it would have had much effect, but maybe it did. I'm just guessing based on my experience. 
another thing could be some sort of chemical reaction and it, that is also possible like uh, the chemical uh, that preserves the gummy bears um, maybe provided an opportunity for the salts in this solution to form these crystals and anyway I think they're just beautiful and this is amazing so crystals like I said occur in nature for instance snowflakes or honey uh, we can see them in gemstones and also in stalactites and stalagmites. So crystallization can be slow, it can be quick, and then we can also make it happen artificially by cooling a solution, by a chemical reaction, or by changing the pH. All right, I hope you learned a little bit here about both osmosis and crystallization, and thank you so much for listening. Bye.